So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Friday. It's a new DAX function every Friday. But into this video, we're not going to do a DAX function. We're going to talk about modeling. You asked me a while back, it's like, Ruth, could you help us um, explaining the disadvantages of using flat tables in Power BI for our customers that keep on using them? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about flat tables and models explain the difference between them and let you choose. How about that? Okay, so. Flat table, first of all, for those of you that do not know, a flat table is basically what you see on the screen. It is one huge table that contains everything. Orders, customers, products, categories, deliveries, you name it, everything in one huge table. And this is something that you would do with Excel. So if you're an Excel user, to be able to, you know, query data, if you're not using the BI modules, obviously. But the normal Excel, you know, you, you put data together so you can access it in the pivot table and then you do calculations in there. In Power BI, you don't need to do that. And if you're using Power Pivot in Excel, you don't need to do that either. You can use a model. And there are good reasons for doing that. First of all, how many columns you can have on a, on a table in Power Pivot? And I was actually Googling that and I saw somebody with like 2 billion columns. Is that true? I, li I leave it unsaid, but you can have a lot of columns. I've never hit a limit on the number of columns. You shouldn't, but we will talk about that in a second. So you can have a lot, a lot of columns, okay? So I guess that's why sometimes you'll see that, you know, just to be able to drag and drop things. In the beginning, it will be easier to have one big table, for sure. If you don't know any DAX, you can drag and drop and you can do a lot of analysis, you know, like in a pivot table, very, very easily. But as you try to do a little bit more complex stuff, the thing starts to get hairy. For example, I have to say, I, I have never ever been able to create a Power BI report with just one table. It's just not possible. I've never succeeded. And I had times when I said, oh, I'm going to get away with one model, one table. No. And the, one of the main reasons is that if you are doing business intelligence, you are doing time intelligence in some form. So you want to know what, what happened last year, this month, previous month, previous year, comparing to, you know, parallel period, seasonalities. You do time analysis. And for that, you need a calendar. And you may say, Ruth, I have all my dates in my flat table. They're like, great, but you're going to need week number. You're going to need month number, year, month, year, sort year, month. You're, and, you know, a calendar is already a big table. So you will have to put a big table to a really big table. And that comes with a huge disadvantage that is performance. So power pivot likes the tables small but tall so you can have a lot of rows but preferable not so many columns and this is due to the way that bi engines are designed so you know the part of the power bi the dax engine that is actually doing the calculations is designed in a way that it can compress data very very quickly and very effective, and then you can find data very quickly. And to do that, you know, it's better to be efficient and to have just the columns that you need. So it doesn't have to compress that much, it doesn't have to put that much uh, information in memory. And then depending on how you do your DAX, you will have to query all the entire table or just the columns that are available, but you have to be good at DAX to be able to do that. So probably your query in the entire table is going to get slow. It's going to get slow, I promise you. And if you have a lot of data, forget about it. It will get slow from the beginning, okay? So if you have a lot of columns, your model will be slow, for sure. And that's based on the way DAX and it works. Go to my Vertipack series, watch those series, and you'll probably get a better understanding as to why. Otherwise, you probably know, if you have a big table and you're doing Power BI, you probably notice that it's slow. 
Okay? Now, the next point I want to come across is usability. When you have a big, long table, it becomes a bit, a bit harder to work with it. So here you have, you know, you have one table and then you have... Now, this is not like specially big, but for what I normally do, this is quite big. And then this has no measures whatsoever. Start adding measures to this thing and this is going to grow big. Then we should be thankful now that we have folders that packs things up a little bit. But still, look at the difference between working in here or working in here. You might say, oh, I know where the, what the name of the fields are. I can search in here. What's the issue? Well, you can, but more often than not, Power BI reports are made to be shared. And your users might not know the database or the, you know, the, the field names. But here, if I come in here and say, I want to know the product name, I can just go to the product table. It's intuitive. And then I will just look in here and say, where is here product name? Otherwise, I have to know that it's called product name. Maybe it's called item number or, you know, depending on which business you are, th those things are called different. Believe me. So... In terms of usability, it is much better to organize things in boxes. You know, most of us like to have things in buckets. You know, either you're male or female, introvert or extrovert, we classify things to make sense of it in our brains. And this helps also to have an overview of what data do I have on my on my model. You can see I have a calendar, I have categories, customers, discounts orders, products, it, it is visible. So the model becomes more usable right away. Okay. Now, if you're doing a report just for you and nobody is going to see it, maybe you can get away with it. But that's another thing. I I never managed to create, you know, when I was using Power BI as a business user, I've never managed to create a report for just myself. As soon as I show it up, it's like exploded. And then it was a hundred people using it. So You won't, it, it, it will, it will get wins on fly, I promise you. So make sure you, you make it usable, as usable as you can. Okay. The next one. Um, this is a part of why you're doing BI. Let's say that you are, um, creating analysis or create a power BI report from your Salesforce data. And more often than not, all these tools, they already have reporting. So you already know how many leads and how many sales and how many it is on the reports in there. But when you get a competitive advantage is when you start putting data from other systems, from other part of the businesses. And that's where you start gaining information that you might not know before. For example, how much sales do my marketing initiatives drive? And maybe you have that in Marketo. So you have to put these two sources together. Okay. And this is when models became very, very, very useful. Let me show you. So here's the thing. Watch this. We have now, and I'm, I'm going to use, you know, technical terminology. This is called a fact table. And this one here is also called a fact table. So fact tables are tables that, you know, contain your daily business, if you would say like that. There are tables that change very, very quickly. For example, this contains orders, so hopefully you get a lot of orders during the day. And they change fast. Then we have this called, these are called dimensional tables or lookup tables. And I think lookup table is a wonderful name for them. I'll show you why in a second. So the lookup tables are basically tables that do not change that much. And they give you information about your main tables or fact tables. So, for example, here we have orders. Who is buying? You can answer from this. And then you have what is buying. The same is here. What? And this is when it is buying. So it's giving you additional information from your facts, you know, from your tables, from the information that is coming every day, hopefully tons of it. So now... We bring in marketo data, our marketing data, marketing. 
if you have a huge table, you will not have, you know, the marketing data will probably have, okay, we did a market from this product and we did it based to, the, to attract this customer and we did it on this date, okay? So the, the, the normal marketing, you know, advertising information. And when you bring this in, you wouldn't be able to link product with the product table, okay? So you don't have to put all the product information in here. If you have a flat table, you have to put all these columns in here and then all these columns in there just to be able to do the analysis, right? But if you already have separated that information into different separate tables, you can just link to it. And that's what, is, what a model is. And then you can link to the data. So you leave in your fact tables, your raw facts, and your dimensional or lookup tables are the tables that you go look up. Okay, what product is that? I have a product ID. Give me the product name. Give me the product price. Give me the face in, face out status. Okay, that's so you look up to the other tables to get more information about it. Okay? And by doing this, your model goes super quickly. If you have flat tables, you will have a huge table here and a huge table there with duplicate information. And DAX, you're going to make DAX work for the money. It's going to work very, 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 very hard. Okay? So models allow you to organize the data to make your, your reports usable, to perform well, and to be able to add new sources very easily and quickly, and keeping the performance of your reports. So those are basically the main reasons why you should create models in Power BI instead of, you know, one big fact table. So I'm curious. Now, let me know what you think about this and if you have other reasons why flat tables are good or bad, models are good or bad. I would love to know. And I know that I read all the comments. I know that you guys read all the comments there. Go make sure you don't miss them. And that's all for today. So I will see you again on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend and bye-bye.